Hey everyone, Cloaked Effects here. Some of you may know me as Stealthy. Now this is my first uh, video review, so I'm going to try to keep it short as possible and to the point. So today we're going to be looking at the uh, LZ ZFL M60 LED Tactical Weapon Light. Now for those who've never heard of LZ, they are an American company based in uh, Kentucky in the United States and I think they were founded in 2007 so they started coming out with um, flashlight mounts for uh, shotguns and the AR platform and I think towards 2010 they started releasing uh, their own flashlights uh, this light is uh, was intended to be uh, mounted on firearms so I'm going to show you here this is my uh, Ultor uh, one inch uh, offset scout mount. You can see, fits there on fine. It's very nice and secure. Okay, so let's talk about price. Uh, I bought the light directly from Alzetta. The price was about 150 to 160 US dollars, and that's without shipping. So yeah, this is an expensive light. So if you thought surefires were expensive, well, you're not gonna like the price of this one. I'm gonna show you the packaging here. This is it here also came with uh, the catalog so let's see some uh, official specs on the packaging it's, uh, it's got 235 lumen output runs at one and a half hours at full battery power uh, it's got an 8 degree optical beam projection so it doesn't use a reflector like um, a lot of the other lights do. It's made of uh, mil spec type 3 hard anodized T6 6061 aluminum body. And let's see here, it's also got O rings for waterproof. And it uses a CR123 battery, so it takes two of those. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, the size of this light. So it's about it's just under five inches. I don't know if you can see it on there. Mm, no. Anyway, it's just under five inches. So it's a uh, nice and compact. I actually uh, carry this every day in my pocket. Uh, here it is compared to the uh, TK15. It's about an inch in difference. And here it is compared to the uh, Surefire 6P LED Defender. Same thing, about an inch. Now in regards to weight, uh, the LZ is heavier than the 3. Uh, I don't have a scale with me to find the exact numbers, but you know if you hold each one in uh, in each hand, you can tell the LZ is a little heavier, and it's probably due to the fact that it is made from that that T6 uh, 6061 aluminum. So yeah, this thing is very robust, very durable as well. There's a video on YouTube by uh, Ares Armor. Uh, what they were doing was they were testing the, uh, the LZ with the Surefire 6PX. So they were doing a, a torture test. So they were, you know, doing things like uh, throwing the light on concrete, on metal, and they even uh, shot it with a shotgun using, uh, I think, birdie shots. And the light was still working after that. Uh, towards the end of the video, though, um, I think they. I think they used buckshot on it, and that eventually took the light out. But uh, 
it lasts a lot longer than the uh, the Surefire 6P X. Uh, there's another video, I think it's by Alzetta themselves, where they used the light as a hammer, and you know they were taking nails and hammering nails into two pieces of two by fours. And in the second video, they show that same light in the same block of wood, except the block of wood now has like a lot of nails in it now and you can tell it's the same light because the, uh, the flashlight the, like where the bezel is uh, the paint the paint was coming off but the it was still working the light was it was functioning perfectly so yeah you can this thing is a very very durable light so the biggest feature of this light in addition to it being made of that T6 6061 aluminum is the fact that it uses a uh, a Makov LED. Uh, for those who never heard of Makov, Makov is a, another flashlight manufacturer much like Elzetta and Surefire. Uh, they make some really high quality flashlights and they also make some upgrades for flashlights. Uh, a, a lot of them actually for the Surefire lights. So you can actually use the uh, this module here. The one, I ha uh, the one that comes with the Elzetta or uh, M60 LEDs. Uh, you can put in the Surefire, but I can't. I can't put it in this one because my f this Surefire uses a uh, a, f a, a KX uh, 4D head. Uh, if it was the original 6P, uh, the incandescent one, I can probably switch it into there. But this is yeah, I can't do it in this. So let's talk uh, customization for the LZ. Uh, I believe there are about. 24 different customization you can have for this light uh, starting with a uh, two cell version or a three cell version and well that means uh, that means like how many batteries it takes the one I have is a two cell version so it's really nice and small and compact uh, the three cell version is obviously a little longer now you can change things like the bezel and as well as the tail cap uh, for the bezel there are three uh, different uh, options you can have the one I have is a um, a low profile bezel. Um, the second option is a the standard one which uh, it has a anti-roll uh, feature so it's got that uh, weird looking cone shape and the third option is a crenellated uh, bezel so it looks like the standard one but it has uh, ridges at the tip here just like uh, like this Surefire so I guess you can use that to you know strike objects uh, for the tail cap, there are four different options. The one that I have right now is a, a rotary switch, um, op, a rotary switch uh, tail cap. So how that works is uh, uh, the, the light activates when you push down on the button. Uh, when you let go, it turns off. Uh, but that's it. Uh, for constant on, you have to turn the tail cap fully clockwise. And there you have your constant on. And to deactivate, just turn it counterclockwise. Uh, the second option is pretty much what a lot of the lights now have, which is a push and click type of tail cap. So if you press the lightly down on the button, it turns on. So that's you get like your momentary mode. And uh, when you let go of your finger, it turns off. For constant on, you have to press down on the button a little further down until you hear a click. When you hear that click, then your constant on is on. To turn it off, just uh, click it again. For the third uh, option, is a uh, is a high and low mode, and it works much like the uh, the uh, push and click one, except that when you have your uh, tail cap all the way turned clockwise you get the high mode and if you uh, turn it counterclockwise just a bit you get the low mode uh, the last uh, tail cap option you can have is a high and strobe mode so that's um, it works much like the uh, the high and low one I just uh, talked about except the low mode is replaced with strobe now uh, the cool thing about these lights is uh is how the uh the, the tail cap works and 
like this surefire one the thing that the only thing that moves is the button on the uh, LZ it's not just the button but as well as the whole tail cap this thing moves if uh, depending on how you like how much it is screwed and unscrewed so like right here I have just a bit uh, loosened you press down on the button you can feel the whole the whole tail cap move up and down I'm not sure what the the pro and con of that is but that's how it works so the last thing regarding the tail cap is that you can uh, actually customize the I guess the sensitivity of the button so I have it kind of slightly loose right now so um, it works like the surefire where you kind of have to press down on the button and, you know there's you can feel it going into the uh, the tail cap um, so yeah that's that's it on that's when it's loose uh, if you screw it in a little bit more just about there uh, now the button you don't even have to press anymore you can actually just tap on it and it turns on so that's really good if you, you know if you wanna I guess maybe in a tactical situation you wanna just really f quickly press it just to tap it just to lighten your target up or whatever and then uh, let go to turn it off so that's a really neat thing okay so now I'm gonna disassemble the light to show you what it looks like on the inside I'll start with the tail cap first so there's a spring right there uh, two CR123 batteries and these are the batteries that actually came with the light now the bezel it's very tight okay and there's the head so this here is the uh, the Mac of uh, M60 LED module. Um, yeah, so you, all you have to do is pop this in the your Surefire if you wanted. It should work. But you want, you want to double check just to see that it's compatible. And you can see there's like no electronics exposed or anything. It's all like enclosed in this little brass uh, module. The lens is even like built in here too. You can't. I don't know if you can remove that. But yeah, that's uh, it's waterproof there. If you can see on the inside, there's pretty much no reflector. It's all just lenses and glass. That's it for disassembly. There's a YouTube video by Elzetta where they uh, they took the light and they submerge it in a bucket of wire and then they disassemble it like a, like this here um, and then they reassemble it while uh, it's in water and the the thing works still so yeah it's uh, it's waterproof and I've got to mention here um, this here is the uh, M60 uh, module right uh, they Mac also has a m61 module and it's got a slightly more lumens but it's got more flood so keep that in mind okay so we're gonna do an indoor uh, demo of the lights just to compare each one I'm gonna start with the surefire 6p LED defender so there it is. It's got a pretty me decent amount of flood. Hotspot's pretty big, but it's not that clear. Next up is uh, the Phoenix TK15. Immediately you can tell it's a lot brighter than the Surefire. The flood is huge on this one. Uh, Hotspot is pretty bright. Uh, on the camera it kind of looks like there's just one but in person you can kind of see another layer there's like a, in the middle you can see a really small uh, hot spot and then like I see a, uh, a slightly bigger one 
outside of that. Okay, next one is LZ ZFL M60. The LZ has a little bit less flood than the uh, the TK15. Hotspot is almost the same size, and it's pretty much just as bright. It's just uh, it doesn't have that in the right in the center doesn't have that extra small hotspot like the TK15 does. Otherwise, this light is pretty pretty bright. Okay, so that's it for the uh, indoor demo. Uh, next up, I will I'll be doing the a demo outside. Okay, so I'm outside my house now. Um, I'm actually between uh, my house and my neighbors, so we got this sort of this uh, hallway in the middle. Um, hallway to the back, my backyard is about 10 to 15 meters. So there we go. So I'm gonna compare the uh, LZ light with the TK uh, Phoenix TK15. So first up is the uh, Phoenix TK15. See, very bright. It's a pretty good flood. It's got a good hot spot as well. You can see all the way down there. Okay, next up is the uh, LZ ZFL M60 light. Got some good flood as well, same as the uh, the uh, TK15. Doesn't seem as bright, but still pretty bright. Maybe it's just the color tint that's a little different. That's kind of make it seem like it's brighter. But anyway, it's uh, I'd say it's almost just as bright as my TK15. Okay, so that's it. Um, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is do a uh, a range test. So I'm just gonna go uh, move the camera to I don't know maybe somewhere on the street here, so we can see get a good uh, range on these lights. So okay, so uh, I moved the camera to an alleyway next to my house. Um, picture is very blurry right now because I put the zoom to the max. This is at 16x. Um, the car you can see there, it's kind of it's blurry, but that's a car in the middle there, and it's about. I don't know, 100, probably 200 meters, maybe more. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna test out the lights now. Uh, first up, LZ. Not sorry, not. Let's do with Phoenix first. First up is Phoenix TK15. You should be able to see the license plate light up. Yep, you can see that. Obviously, uh, kind of hard. Well, can't really see what's in f exactly in front of me, but I'm just showing how far it, it goes. And yeah, you can see the license plate uh, license plate light up. Let's try that again. See a little raccoon there. All right. Uh, so next up is the LZ ZFL M60. So you can see the license plate light up just a bit there. So I'm going to say that they both have pretty much the same range. Obviously, this is not, not exactly a professional test, but just a little quick, uh, quick demonstration to see how far these things can go. Let's try that again. Alzetta TK15. So it looks like the TK-15 actually goes a little further. It, it lights up the license plate a, little, a lot better than the, uh, the LZ. So anything actually, saw, like stop signs that have um, that, that paint where it reflects, anything at a far, uh, far distance will light up. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out here. Okay, that's it guys. This is the uh, review for the LZ ZFL M60. Although an expensive light, um, I do recommend it. It's very, very uh, durable. Um, 
Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.